Yes, in an article published in 1911, Sir Herbert Baker was described as one of the master builders of that era, and his work had the power of wielding a great influence on future generations, and leaves them a rich heritage of which they cannot be robbed. Welcome, and thanks for joining me. My forefathers are buildings in the sand They left a thousand ruins across the land I love them deep like salt, they feel bitter on my skin I believe in pleasure, they believe in sin Listen to the crying in the street All the lonely people that you meet Children of the change caught like rats in a trap But the little ones are dancing to the juco box trap Sir Herbert Baker, whose work and influence in South African architecture have marked him as one of the masters and leaders of his profession in this country, in which he lived for nearly 20 years. He was the architect of the British Empire in a way, designing buildings all over Africa, India and England. Now in this episode I just want to have a quick look at some of the buildings that still survive today. Originally built in 1657 and acquired by Cecil John Rhodes in 1891, Grotesque was one of Herbert Baker's earliest works. He collaborated with Cecil John Rhodes who wanted to remodel the homestead. Rhodes commissioned Baker to rebuild the house on a new model but yet retaining the characteristics of the old homestead and the result is familiar to most South Africans. Grote Skier ranked the like for its peculiar beauty and associations as one of the historic and artistic homes of the time. In March 1900 Cecil John wrote St. Herbert Baker to Rome to visit the land of those who still ruled the spirit of builders from their urns. After the visit he incorporated a lot of the Roman architecture in his designs. Now one of the greatest and most magnificent works is the Union Building that stands tall on Menkis Kop in Pretoria. His modelling of the building on the steep slope of the copy provide a rare architectural progression of flights of steps, gardens and terraces connecting to different levels. Now flanking the amphitheatre on either side, the two dome-shaped towers bestows a fine balance of sense and symmetry on the entire building. Distinctive features of the building are the columned temples leading out to the minister's room. The foundation and lower walls are built with large blocks of Transvaal granite. Now above that was used sandstone from Transvaal and another sandstone from the Free State was used for the superstructure. Now Baike put great care in a visual effect that his architecture will have, and everything was symmetric in his designs. The Union of South Africa at the time were made up of four colonies. The expansion of the Transvaal gold mining industry left the colony in a more favourable financial position than the other colonies, and Pretoria ultimately became the capital of the Union. Now the Union building was one of the first of a series of three imperial and administrative buildings erected in Pretoria, Canberra and in Delhi. Now while Herbert Baker was planning the Union buildings, he was busy constructing the new railway station in Pretoria. Now the first station was opened in 1892 and a cornerstone of the new station was laid in 1910. Some of the features he would again use when designing the Union buildings. The three-story building is mainly constructed out of reinforced concrete and sandstone. The roof is covered with an Italian red tile manufactured in Vereniging, crowned by a central clock tower out of stone. Now it was damaged by a fire in 2001, but restoration work on the building was done swiftly. One of the most impressive ceremonies South Africa has ever held was in October of 1925 when a statue of President Paul Creer was unveiled in the front garden of the station. The statue was removed in later years. He also designed some buildings in Potsdam. The castle, as it is known locally, was the administrative building of the Agricultural College that opened in 1910. 
A second phase, the Selborne Hall, was also designed by Herbert Baker and completed in 1911. Today these two buildings are in a state of almost ruins and left to the elements. What was left was vandalized and burned down and the right side of the building is on the verge of collapse. Luckily of his other work survives. The girls high school in an arts and craft design is very similar to the police station in the town which at the time were the capital of the Transvaal colony before it moved to Pretoria when the union buildings were finished. Herbert Baker moved back to England where he continued designing and building. In London he built four empire houses and the South African house in Trafalgar Square is the most richly fitted and complete and is the culmination of his love and knowledge of South Africa. It's a classical style building with arts and craft inspired carved details of indigenous animals and symbols of South Africa. It opened in 1933 as the High Commission of South Africa. In 1961, when South Africa became a republic, it withdrew from the Commonwealth due to its apartheid policy and the building was used as an embassy. During 1980, long vigils were held outside the entrance in Trafalgar Square, culminating in a four-year non-stop vigil for the release of all political prisoners in South Africa, four days after the first democratic elections in South Africa on the 27th of April 1994, the country rejoined the Commonwealth and the mission once again became a High Commission. Nasser Herbert Baker was born in 1862 and he passed away in 1946 at his family home Owlets in Kent. The end of his life also marked the beginning of the end of the British Empire and the grand manner classical style with which his architectural career was associated. He was laid to rest in Westminster Abbey. And that's it for me. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please like, subscribe and I will see you in the next one. My forefathers are buildings in the sand They left a thousand ruins across the land I love them deep like salt They feel better on my skin I believe in pleasure, they believe in sin.